Here's a clever technique that can save a lot of screen real estate. You're limited on how big your window can be and sometimes you need all that room. And so what this technique allows you to do is hide some functionality in a little hidden area. These are all functional fields right here as you can see. But we can open this up and choose buttons or fields we could put in here. We could put portals. You could put anything you want in there and then close it. This might be for some functionality that is not really that important to show all the time, so you want to hide it. Maybe it's used uh, a couple of times a day or something like that. And let's show you how to find this FileMaker file that goes along with this video. All you have to do is go to the databasepros.com website, click on the resources link, and then type in drawer. Hit the Find button. You'll notice you come up with two hits. The one I'm actually using is this example. It's a very simple example. A more complex one is right here, and I would definitely check this one out also if you're interested in this technique. But start with this one and then move on up into the more advanced one. So how does this work? That's the big question. It seems like it's not a FileMaker capability. Well, it is. We're just using it in a, in a, you know, a way it was never designed to work. So let's take a quick look and look in layout mode. And you notice there's nothing here until you actually click. And if you double click on it, you notice we have a slide control. And that's this choice right here. Oops, not popovers. Apologize. Got the wrong one there. Slide controls. They're usually for the iOS, but you can use them anywhere you want. And they're very cool. And what I'm going to do is double click on this and show the navigation not, dots. Obviously, we don't want to show those because then it's going to look like this in browse mode. You don't want to see those. That's why I've hidden them. We want it to not look like a slide control panel. So each slide control, there's three of them. There's this one, which has a button in it. When you double click on that button, you'll see it says drawer open. Come over here and look at the, we'll click again on that. We'll see that this object's name default, this, this uh, panel from the slide control. We go to the second one, we'll see this one's called open. And it has a button over here and then some graphics or the you know the, the tab has been actually been filled with a color. Whereas this one back here is made to match the background color and not have any color. I've I've done a lot of work with the appearance section to make each one of these look different. So you'll notice that there's not a lot of settings here. We go over here. We'll notice we have different settings and, and it, it looks different. So you just have to play around with it until it gets the look and feel you want. I'm not going to go over in detail how to do that. But I will point out that this one's called Open. And it has a button in here that runs Drawer Close. That's another script. And then there's a third one here. It looks exactly like the first one. In fact, it is exactly the same. It has a button in it that says Drawer Open, just like the first one. The only difference is it has a different name on this. It's called Close. So I've close, open, and then default. So why do we do that? Well, it's best shown if we come in here and look at the scripts first, and then take one of the pieces out of the script. So we'll go into the script workspace. There's our drawer open. So we set the layout object animation on because we want that little drawer effect where it animates and comes on and closes. Otherwise, it just pops up on the screen. And we really want that animation. It, it really completes this whole concept. And then we say, go to object close, and then go to object open. Now, the close simply says, turn it on, and then go to the close. So why do we do this extra step here? And this is really the extra one here. We want to open here. And on the close, we want to close. Simply go to those objects. So why are we doing this? Well, the best way to see it is to turn this off. We're going to come into here and disable this. Save this script. And then go into layout mode to, to show you what's going on. So we're going to go into layout mode. And then right back to browse mode. That resets everything. So now it's on the first choice here. And watch very carefully when I click on this. You're going to see it kind of do some animation that we don't like. See how it came from the left side? Now when I do it a second time, see how it keeps doing that? We don't want to do that. I want it to come from the other side. So let's take a look at that script and turn it now, this feature on. And we'll enable it and then save it. And we'll close it. 
Okay, so now it's back. In fact, I really should go to layout mode and then back to browse mode. Now it's at the default tab or the default slide control. And notice now when we open it up that it slides the other direction the way it, we would expect it to happen. And now it's on this choice here, which is the same as the first choice. But if I go to layout mode and then go to browse mode, it goes to the default, which is this one. Now, why didn't I just take this third dot and move it over here? Well, the problem is, is we want the animation to go to the direction we want. So the animation works in the direction in which we're going through sequentially through these dots. So if I put this dot in the position of the first place and only have two dots, well, then the animation is going to do what I just did, what I just showed you by disabling that step right there. That's why we do the step, so we get the animation going the correct direction. And you can see it says the slide control panel named close is selected first in cases of the first time the drawer has been opened. In other words, it's the first time you visit that layout and or gone away and come back to that layout. It's going to always get to the default, and we want that animation to go to the right direction. And that's really all there is to it. There's some trickery as far as some graphics and things like that, uh, you know, but obviously we want to turn these little dots off. But, you know, we want to make sure this graphic is right aligned in the same spot and you have to work a little bit. That's why I don't necessarily say this is the best technique because there is a little bit of work. It, it not only does the, the slide control panel kind of get in your way on your layout, but it also requires, you know, all that work to put the buttons on there and make the buttons the scripts when you could just really just use uh, some other methods like custom menus to hide stuff under the menus that are not used very often. So, but if you want something a little bit slicker, and your client really wants it and they're willing to pay for it, then this might not be a bad idea, a bad choice for hiding or getting more screen real estate for your user.